Hi guys, in this video we're going to have a look at indices and the, uh, more specifically the first four rules. Um, so first things first, indices are the powers, so it's when it's to the power of something. So for example, x to the power of a, we would say that a is the indice or the power. And uh, same thing with this one, x to the power of b, b would be the power or the indice. And we're going to look at four rules in this video. So I'll call it part one and part two because I'm combining my previous video to contain both of them because there's a few more examples as well. So to hopefully make it a bit clearer. So let's get cracking with the first rule. So the first rule is this one here, where if you have x to the power of a and you are timesing it by x to the power of b, it actually can be simplified by just saying it's x and you add the powers. Okay, so if you're timesing, okay, you can just add the indices. That becomes a bit clearer, I'll do a few examples. But to do that rule, you must note that this must be x to the power of something times x to the power of something. If that was x to the power of a times y to the power of b, you couldn't use this rule because these two would be different. So that's the only thing you need to bear in mind when using this rule. The base bit here, the x and the x, they must be the same, or y, y, or a, a, whatever it is, they must be the same to use this rule. Anyway, let's get cracking. So in the first example, x squared times x cubed, so they're both x's, that's fine, and I can just add the powers. So quite simply, x to the power of 5 would be your answer. Okay, if you're unsure as to why this works, if you check out my multiplying um, variables uh, video, that will explain how you do uh, why this works. But as I said, this is just the rule. Next one here, x times x to the power of 6. Most common mistake here is people go, oh, it's just x to the power of 6. But there is that invisible one there. We don't always write it because it's just x to the power of 1 is just x, so we just simplify that to be x, but technically there is a 1 there. So when we then apply this rule, both x's, we can add the powers, it would in fact be x to the power of 7, okay? So that's the basics of it. What happens then if we have numbers in front of the uh, variable here? Well, we treat the numbers exactly the same as you would do any other number, so it would just be 3 times 6, which is 18. So we just treat that exactly as you would do any normal calculation, 3 times 6. And then we can use our rule up here. So I've got a to the power of 3 times a to the power of 5. They're both a's. We're timesing them, so I can add the powers. So that would be a to the power of 8. Okay, and then that's just your answer. 18, a to the power of 8. It's like the same thing here, even when dealing with negatives. Of course, you have to use the rules surrounding negatives. So again, I'm going to do the numbers first. Minus 2 times 7 is minus 14. A negative times a positive is a negative. So that'll give me minus 14. I've then got b to the power of 4 and b to the power of minus 3. They're both b's. Happy days, I can use this rule. And then it's 4 plus minus 3. So 4 adding minus 3 is basically the same as saying 4 take away 3, so that would be b to the power of 1. But if it wants it in its simplest form, we would just say that's minus 14 b, because b to the power of 1 is just b. Okay, so you still have to uh, abide by your negative rules, whether you be adding or timesing, but you can still do it even with negative numbers. Okay, the second rule then, exactly the same, but instead of multiplying, we're dividing. It's like the same rules apply as far as if that's x, that also must be x. These two must be the same. And if we're dividing them, we take the powers away. So let's have a look at this one. x to the power of 6 divided by x to the power of 2. I'm going to have my x, and I'm just going to subtract the powers. 6 take away 2 is 4. Easy peasy. This one here is just exactly the same. Remember when it's written as a fraction, it just means divide. So this just means y to the power of 6 divided by y to the power of 3. So again, they're both y's, so that's not a problem. So I'm going to have y and then 6 take away 3. Leaves me with 3 for the power there. Same thing here. y to the power of 4 divided by y to the power of 8. So I've got my y and then 4 take away 8 leaves me with minus 4. Okay, so it would be y to the power of minus 4. Uh, that could also be written as y over 
sorry, 1 over y to the power of 4. But I'm going to look, talk about that in my other video, uh, Linked to Indices, Part 3, which looks at negative and fractional indices. So if you want to look into why that does that, um, that's the video to watch for that. But both of those are correct. Same thing for this one. Both A is not a problem. Take away then, so minus 2, take away 5. So I'm on minus 2, I take away another 5. So I end up going all the way down to minus 7. So it's the power of minus 7. And the final one for this rule, I've got 10b squared divided by 5b to the power of minus 3. So just like when we were timesing, treat the numbers exactly the same. 10 divided by 5 is 2. And then I can look at the b squared divided by b to the power of minus 3. So I'm going to have my b. And then I'm doing 2. And because I'm dividing, I take away and I'm taking away minus 3. So you notice I've deliberately written it like this, because hopefully you're already ahead of me. When you take away a negative number, you actually add it. So 2 add 3 would give you 5. So it would be 2b to the power of 5. So just be very careful when doing this. If you take away a negative power, so 2 take away minus 3, remember we add them to get 5. Okay, so there's the first two rules. So that's part one done. Let's have a look at the next two rules. Okay, the next rule is this one here. So if you have x to the power of a, which is again to the power of b, you multiply the powers. Okay, so let's have a look at some examples to clear that rule up. x to the power of 8, which is squared, or to the power of 2, we just multiply the powers. So I'm going to have x, and then 8 times 2 is just 16. Nice and easy. Same thing here, y to the power of 4, which is being cubed, or well, that's to the power of 3. We have y, and we just do 4 times 3, which is 12. Now this is where it gets a little bit interesting and where people tend to make mistakes. If you have a number in here, first of all, that would be a to the power of 1. Let's just put that in there. You do 2 cubed. So just like if you were multiplying or dividing, you still treat the number exactly the same. So you'd still do 2 cubed, which just means 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. So dealing with the number first leaves me with 8. And then I can deal with the a to the power of 1 cubed. 1 times 3 is 3. So that would just be a to the power of 3. Okay, So you must do the number to the power of whatever is on the outside, as you would do normally. Just like in this case here as well, I've got 3 and it's squared. So 3 squared just means 3 times 3, which of course is 9. So dealing with the number first, I have 9. And I've got a b here. Again, that's b to the power of 1. And then you just do it separately. So 1 times 2 is 2, so that would be b squared. And then I have c to the power of 4. And then obviously square it. This is where I use the rule again to times the powers. So then that would be c to the power of 8. And the final one here. Again, dealing with the number first. This time I have minus 4. And that's being squared. So that just means minus 4 times minus 4. Remember, a negative times a negative is a positive. So that gives me 16. So I'm left with 16. Then I deal with the x. So x cubed, and then it's squared, so 3 times 2 is 6. And I can deal with the y, minus 4, and then obviously it's to the power of 2, so we times those, so minus 4 times 2 would give me minus 8. Okay, so just treat it step by step, deal with the number, then the first letter, then the second letter, or first variable and second variable, and so on. That's the third rule. The fourth rule, and the final rule for this video is anything to the power of 0 equals 1. Apart from 0 to the power of 0, that's undefined. It doesn't work. Okay, but anything else, anything to the power of 0, so in this case, just as the rule here, x to the power of 0 equals 1. So if it's 5 to the power of 0, it's 1. If it's y to the power of 0, it's 1. It's always, always 1. Okay. And that's the last rule. Now what I've got coming up is a few more examples of where we can use these rules but in more tricky situations. So 
enjoy these. Buy one is given a go beforehand. These are taken from previous exam questions, so hopefully uh, it will help you in the future. So here we go then. We're told that 5 to the power of x times 5 to the power of y is equal to 5 to the power of 12. Now this uses the very first rule, where if you're timesing, you add the powers. So what I can do is I can say that if I just look at the powers, x plus y, that must equal 12. Okay, because I'm using that very first rule. When I'm timesing these, I add the powers. So that's what I can do with that very first one there. Similarly with this one, I use the second rule that we talked about. When we are dividing, you take away the powers. So I'm going to have x take away y, and we're told that that result for the power would be 6. So basically I've formed two separate equations. When I add the powers, I get 12, and then when I take away the powers, I get 6. Now, of course, you can do a bit of trial and error here, but what I'm going to do is solve this simultaneously. So check out my simultaneous video um, on how to do this, or again, trial and error would work. You could figure that out with this. So I've got a y and a y here. These are different, so that means I'm going to add these two equations. So y plus minus y will eliminate the y's. So I'll be left with 2x, because x times x is, so x plus x is 2x, and 12 plus 6 is 18. I can just solve this equation. So I'm going to do a very quick flow chart. X, I times it by 2 to get 18. I go back, 18 divided by 2 gives me x, and therefore x must be 9. Once I know x is 9, I can put it into either of these two equations. I'm going to pick the top one just because it's nice and positive. So the top one there is x plus y equals 12. If I know x is 9, I just replace it. And then 9 plus what gets me 12? You can use the flow chart for this, but hopefully you should be able to see that y would be 3. Just check it on the second equation as well. x is 9, so 9 take away 3 is 6. Yes, it works. Okay, so you could be asked to use these rules in the context of using a simultaneous equation. Okay, let's have a look at some other slightly trickier ones. I'm going to look at substitution in this one. Here we go. So we're told that a is equal to 2 to the power of x, and we're told that b is equal to 2 to the power of y. And we've got to express the following in terms of a and b. So basically we've got to substitute these values for a and b and obviously simplify them. So again, I'm going to use the rules that we've just talked about. In the first one here, I've got 2 to the power of x plus y. Now, this is the first rule that we talked about, where we add the powers. So 2 to the power of x plus y, going back to rule number 1, is exactly the same as saying 2 to the power of x times 2 to the power of y. Remember, if we times these, we add the powers. What I've done is basically gone backwards and separated them out. Why is this useful? Well, 2 to the power of x we know is a and 2 to the power of y, we know is b. So when I substitute these values in, I have a times b, which of course is ab. Okay, so happy days, I put it in terms of a and b. These next two use the third rule, where 2x, this is the power I'm looking at here, means 2 times x. And remember, when you times the powers, that was when you had it in a bracket. So if I just write that out, that just means I've got x times 2. Now, I'll just swap those around a little bit to make the next bit a bit easier to see what's going on, because if I put 2 to the power of x in a bracket, which is just basically doing that, I'm still squaring it. OK, so this is the third rule. If I had this, I would simplify that by timesing the powers. So 2 times x would give me 2x. So again, I've gone backwards on the third rule to get this. Why have I done that? Well, I know that 2 to the power of x is a. So this basically just means a squared. OK, because I'm just substituting that in for a, and then, of course, I've got my squared. Exactly the same idea for this one. Still using that third rule. I've got 2, and then I've got uh, th uh, to the power of 3y, which means it's 2 to the power of y times 3. Because remember, we, that just means 
we're timesing, which leads me on to think it's the third rule, just like we did over here, which means I can do 2 to the power of y, and then cubed, basically again I've just done that, and put brackets around there. Why? Because I know that 2 to the power of y is b. Don't forget you've still got to cube it. Okay. So there's some examples there, and the final one here, combining a little bit of everything. So we're told first of all that it's x plus 2y, so we're adding the powers. That tells me it's rule number one, just like we had here. So let's start with that. So that means 2 to the power of x times 2 to the power of y. Uh, sorry, 2 to the power of 2y. Okay, so the adding there breaks it up using the first rule. 2x we know is a, so I'm going to substitute that in straight away. And then we've got to deal with this. It's got the y in there, so it tells me it's going to be a b. I need to get it in, in uh, the uh, uh, way I was saying 2 to the power of y. And it's going to be exactly the same idea here using the third rule. 2y means I've times. Gives me the clue it's the third rule. So I'm going to break that up and say that's 2 to the power of 2 times y. And I can say a times, and then I can just put the brackets around it and say that's 2 to the power of y, because I need that to be b. And then it's going to be squared. So just like I did here, which means that's a times b squared because 2y equals b, and then I've got my squared afterwards, and then you can just simplify the a times b squared to be ab squared. So it's just a little way that you can use those rules in a slightly more trickier situation. Um, yeah, hopefully that's useful, guys. Thanks for watching.